Good morning, everyone. My topic for the study is high-resolution high computer tomography findings in COVID-19 diagnosed and suspected cases. The aim of the study is to study the HRCT manifestations in the evaluation of COVID-19 suspected and diagnosed patients and study its correlation in respect to CT severity scoring with symptomatology, comorbidities, lab parameters, and oxygen requirement in the study group. Uh, during COVID-19 pandemic, over 770 million confirmed cases of SARS-CoV-2 were reported by the World Health Organization, including over 6.9 million deaths. Infected infection by COVID-19 virus can result in a wide range of clinical outcomes from being asymptomatic to severe life-threatening life course or death. Symptoms due to COVID-19 infections can include fever, track of breathlessness, anosmia, and malaise, which are non-specific symptoms. Uh, common laboratory findings include, or include decreased uh, leukocyte count, increased CRP levels and increased ferritin levels, and increased D-dimer levels in some patients. HRCT is an important and irreplaceable method for early detection of COVID-19 associated lung abnormalities when clinical features are non-specific, sparse, or when patient is asymptomatic. It plays an important role in screening the COVID-19 suspected patients, diagnosis of COVID-19 infections, in disease progression, in detection of complications, and for follow-up after discharge to look for changes of fibrosis. The most common CT finding include bilateral patchy ground glass opacities involving multi multiple lobes of the lungs. These opacities are more likely to show peripheral distribution than central, central distribution and uh, are more patchier than oval. Other CT findings with uh, Pure ground glass opacities can uh, also include GGOs with interlobular septal thickening, GGOs with consolidation or pure consolidation. Pleural effusion, lymphadenopathy, pericardial effusion, cavitations, and pneumothorax are some of the atypical but possible findings and can be seen in COVID-19 infections. Now coming to the methods, uh, this was a descriptive study conducted between July 2020 and July 2022 at Dr. D.Y. Patil Medical College Hospital and Research Center, Pune, after taking necessary approval by the Institutional Scientific and Ethics Committee. 500 patients meeting the inclusion criteria for the study were included in the study after taking a written informed consent from all the patients. Uh, coming to the results, a total of 500 study participants were included. Out of them, 27%, which were which is uh, 133 uh, patients, were categorized uh, categorized as mild on the basis of CT severity score. 51%, which is 257 patients, were categorized as moderate, and 78 participants were categorized as severe. 32 patients, which is 6.4% of the patients who were suspected for having COVID-19 infections and uh, being diagnosed as COVID-19 positive on RT-PCR tests, showed normal HRCT scans. Our study group included 311 male and uh, 189 females and uh, the proportion of male showing um, severe disease were more in comparison to, the fem comparison to female as uh, described here. About 39% of the total female population have either a normal HRCT or being categorized into mild severity in comparison to only 29% uh, males having a normal HRCT or being categorized into mild severity on the basis of HRCT score. Uh, now coming to the tables and figures. This table 1 shows the typical features of COVID-19 infection on HRCT scan, which are ground glass opacities, interlobular septal thickening, crazy waving pattern, and consolidation. Um, here we can see that uh, people having severe disease, 100% uh, of those people showed ground glass opacities and uh, uh, septal thickening, crazy paving pattern, and consolidation were seen uh, more commonly seen in people having severe disease and less commonly seen uh, in people having mild and moderate disease. In our study group population, bilateral involvement of the lung parenchyma on HRCT was more common and was seen to affect approximately 84.8% of the total population and unilateral lung involvement was, was only seen in 6.8% of the total population. It was also found that there was a lower lobe predominance in early and milder form of the disease with the right lower lobe being the most common lobe being affected followed by the left lower lobe. It was also seen that uh, there was predominantly peripheral distribution of the lung changes on HRCT in our study group. Uh, coming to the table 2 and figure 1, uh, table, two and uh, table 2 shows uh, the distribution of atypical findings on HRCT according to the DZ severity groups as per CT severity score and uh, atypical findings were present in 38.5% of the people having severe disease. Uh, this is a graphical representation of the same and uh, this figure also shows the mean days since the symptom onset and CT severity scoring, uh, which was the highest for uh, the severely diseased people, uh, which was 7.3. Now, these atypical symptoms uh, include pleural effusion, which is the most common atypical findings. Uh, finding, And uh, other atypical findings are pericardial effusion, bronchiectasis, emphysematous pulmonary cysts. Um, and uh, however, no patients develop pneumothorax. 
uh, in uh, the control group and uh, the mild group, but four patients in moderate group and only three patients in severe group developed pneumothorax. Only one patient in the moderate group uh, had cavitations. However, there was no statistically significant association between CT severity scores and bronchiectasis, emphysematous pulmonary cyst, cavitated lesions, pericardial effusion, and uh, barotrauma associated changes like pneumothorax and surgical emphysema. Uh, this uh, table 3 shows distribution of the symptoms like anosmia, sore throat and chest pain in the disease categories on the basis of CT severity score. Uh, the most common symptom uh, seen was cough, which was seen in 65.2% uh, of the patients chosen, followed by fever, whereas chest pain was seen only in 78% of the population. The association between these symptoms and disease severity groups as per CT severity scoring is statistically, statistically significant. Uh, table uh, 4 shows uh, the distribution of asymptomatic patients suspected of COVID-19 disease on the basis of CT severity score. In our study population, about 14.2%, that is uh, 72 uh, people, were asymptomatic. Of the total patients having normal CT scan and being categorized in the negative group, about 46.9% were asymptomatic. Of the total population having mild CT severity score, 28.6 patients were asymptomatic. And in the population having moderate score, 6.6 .6 patients were asymptomatic. Only one patient having severe CT score was asymptomatic. Now, uh, this is a table 5 which shows the distribution of patients with hypertension, diabetes, mellitus or asthma in DG severity groups classified according to CT severity score. Now, um, amongst the severely diseased people, uh, the... Uh, among the severely diseased people, 38.5 people uh, had hypertension, 24.4 people had diabetes mellitus and none had asthma. So uh, the correlation of hypertension with uh, the CT, uh, with the disease was uh, statistic, uh, statistically significant. Uh, table 6 uh, shows the distribution of normal or abnormal lymphocyte count, CRP and serum ferritin. And also the D-dimer levels in the DZ severity groups classified according to, to the CT severity score. So amongst the diseased people, of course, the uh, TLCs were decreased. The D-dimers uh, and serum ferritin levels and the CRP levels were raised. However, it did not show any statistical significance as we can see from the p-values here. Now, table 7 showed the oxygen requirement in DZ severity groups classified according to the CT severity score. So, uh, amongst the severely diseased people, 64.1% uh, of the population needed uh, oxygen. Amongst the moderate, moderately diseased uh, patients, 39.3% uh, of the population required oxygen. And amongst the mildly diseased people, 6.8% of the population required oxygen. Now, coming to the discussion part, uh, COVID-19 uh, infection ha uh, has become a pandemic with significant impacts upon the healthcare delivery system. And causing increasing morbidity and mortality. Now, World Health Organization advised to use test radiographs in HRCT thorax as part of the workup for diagnosis of COVID-19 infection in cases of unavailability of RT-PCR tests, delayed dis results of uh, the RT-PCR tests, clinical suspicion of COVID-19 in spite initial negative RT-PCR test result. Our study had been performed with the intention to aid the clinicians in taking better decisions for making the accurate diagnosis of COVID-19 disease, assessing the disease severity, and also being useful in providing appropriate supportive care and treatment for the affected populations. We use the visual assessment of each of the five lobes, which is also called the LOBAR method. Now, based on this method, COVID severity score was considered as mild, with CT severity score between 1 and 7, moderate, with CT severity score between 8 and 15, and severe, with the score being... Um, between 16 and 25. So in our study, younger population had mild CT severity score while older, older age groups had uh, moderate and severe CT scores. These findings were similar, similar to the study done by Saeed et al. in a study conducted on 902 patients and another study performed by Fagerly et al. on five, uh, a study conducted on 574 patients. Severe form of COVID-19 was commonly observed in male population. Similar observations were made in previously conducted studies such as those conducted by Saeed et al. and Mozawi et al. who had observed strong positive correlation between male sex and increment in the CT severity score. Uh, the study uh, found that the bilateral rung parenchyma involvement was more common in mild CT severity and earlier disease scores. The preference for peripheral lung involvement, lower lobe involvement was more prevalent with the right lower lobe being more involved. Now, grand, ground class opacities, interlobular septal thickening, crazy paving pattern and consolidation were the most common chest CT findings 
uh, amongst the COVID-19 patients. These findings are considered as the typical manifestations of COVID-19. Similar findings were also seen in the previous studies um, conducted by the following authors. They had also observed that uh, GGOs by itself or in conjunction with consolidation were the most common findings on HRCT in COVID-19 patients followed by interlobular septal thinning, crazy waving pattern and subtural lines. Atypical features of COVID-19 disease on HRCT were found in 24% of the total population, more common in patients with moderate and severe severity scores. Total effusion was the most common atypical findings followed by mediastinal lymphadenopathy. This difference was found to be statistically significant, similar to a study considered by Lee et al. that found atypical features more commonly in severe and critically diseased patients. Bronchiac assays and other uh, features like uh, emphysematous pulmonary cysts and cavitations, cavitations did not show any significant correlation with increasing CT severity scores. A study conducted by um, Magialetti et al. found a higher barotrauma prevalence in mechanically ventilated patients. In our study, spontaneous pneumothorax with pneumomediastinum and subcutaneous emphysema were observed in seven patients but not statistically significant. These features can be attributed to iatrogenic induced barotrauma as observed in our previously studied literatures. Our study also found that the earlier a patient presents with their first symptoms, the milder the lung involvement is on HRCT. Patients with mild CT severity scores had the lowest mean number of days in the first symptom, followed by moderate and severe scores. Common symptoms included cough, fever, sore throat, breathlessness, um, anosmia, and chest pain. The association between uh, these symptoms and DZ severity was significant. Asymptomatic patients with history of contact with an infected patient were found to have a milder lung involvement based on the CT features. Now, however, in these patients, CT is a crew crucial method for screening and detecting these patients as they can act as a covert transmitter or progress to a severe disease if not adequately evaluated and treated. Now, uh, similar observations were also seen in the previously conducted studies by the following authors. Uh, our study also found that the hyper at hypertension was the most common comorbidity in COVID-19 patients followed by diabetes mellitus and asthma. Severe CT severity groups had the highest prevalence of hypertension with positive CT findings more prominent in comorbid patients. Previously uh, done studies showed that HRCT helped assess oxygen support requirements in disease populations. In our study, it uh, our study supports that previous uh, supports these previous studies uh, done by um, Akshay et al. and emphasizes importance of CT severity scores in determining oxygen support requirements in COVID-19 patients. Our study has also found a significant correlation between elevated CRP levels. Uh, and CT severity scores with lymphopenia in 32.5% of the population. However, no statistical significance was found between lymphopenia and CT severity scores, unlike the previous studies conducted by Said et al. and Nielmaz et al. No signif statistically significant difference was observed between elevated serum ferritin levels and CT severity scores too. The study's smaller sample size may explain the lack of the statistical significance between lymphopenia, elevated ferritin levels, and CT severity scores. Further research with larger samples could help establish a relationship between these factors. Now, uh, previously um, done studies also found that 30% of the COVID-19 pneumonia patients had pulmonary thromboembolism on CT pulmonary angiography compared to 1% in non-COVID patients. In our study, only 11 patients underwent CTPA uh, due to breathlessness and elevated D-dimer levels. 8 patients had pulmonary thromboembolism with D-dimer levels and CRP levels found raised in all of these 8 patients. No statistical significance, however, was found between pulmonary thromboembolism incidence and CT severity scores. Now, to conclude my study, I would like to say that COVID-19 disease has had a significant negative impact on the healthcare system across the world. Now, HRCT imaging plays an important role in assessing disease severity and progression. It also plays an important role to, in triage to assess oxygen requirement and help guide clinicians in overcoming dilemma to administer adequate and necessary treatment. CT severity scoring can help to stratify and ascertain risks and prognosis involved for a patient and is also useful to predict short-term outcome of these patients. Due to its ability to provide results rapidly in contrast to the RT-PCR tests, HRCT examination of thorax is also useful as to evaluate possibility of COVID-19 infection in a suspected patient. In our study, we have been able to collect information of typical and atypical findings on HRCT in COVID-19 disease and uh, presence of various features with respect to different phases of the disease progression. In our study, the extent of CT 
damage as per CT severity score correlates significantly with the age, gender of the patient, symptomatology, altered laboratory parameters, and associated comorbidities in a patient. It helps as a tool to evaluate requirement for oxygen support in suitable candidates in assessing the involved risks of iatrogenic barotrauma due to mechanical ventilation and evaluating features of COVID-19 sequel. Uh, few limitations of our study include the timeline of changes in the hematological parameters in relation to the changes in CT scan with progression regression of the disease severity was not studied and also the study being a single center study. There was unavailability of lab parameters and chest radiographs in some of our patients which can likely be attributed to the fact that the proportion of our study group were taking treatment on outpatient basis. Uh, factors such as lifestyle and other risk factors which can affect COVID-19 severity should have been considered in more detail so further investigations and uh, researches are needed. Uh, our study uh, supports the use of HRCT in patients with COVID-19 infection, which could be used as a rapid and effective gatekeeper to rule out patients with a low likelihood of disease. Now coming to the case gallery, I would like to present a few cases. Uh, uh, the first case in figure three is a 44-year-old female diagnosed, um, is an RT-PCR diagnosed case of COVID-19 with a severity score of 4 by 25, which is mild severity. And here we can see that uh, on coronal and axial sections, the ground glass opacities are seen. The second case seen in figure four is a 28-year-old female uh, who tested positive for COVID-19 uh, and has a CT severity score of uh, 9 by 25, which is uh, which comes under the moderate category. And here we can see uh, the ground glass opacities on coronal sections and here on axial sections. Third case here uh, is a 41-year-old uh, male uh, tested COVID positive with a CT severity score given 25 by 25. And here we can see that the both lungs, uh, all lobes of actually both lungs uh, show ground glass opacities. Here are the coronal and axial sections. Uh, some also show interlobular septal thickening and crazy waving pattern. In this case in figure uh, 6, we can see that a 50-year-old uh, COVID positive patient is given a CT severity score of 20 by 25 and it shows bilateral pleural effusion which is seen here. Now, coming to the last case, which I will be showing here, uh, figure 7 represents a 46-year-old male which uh, who was diagnosed as COVID positive with a CT severity score of 20 by 25. Now, this patient had a history of mechanical ventilation and uh, showed signs of pneumomediastinum and surgical emphysema due to barotrauma. And here we can see the emphysema changes in the lung window and the soft tissue window seen here on axial sections. Thank you.